Hi guys, my name is Madison Stewart. That's me. Unfortunately, that's also me. A few years ago, I started Project Hue. Basically, we work with the shark fishermen to bring them tourism so they can make money and don't have to fish sharks. But why does this matter? Well, let's look at a little history. The earliest fossil evidence for sharks or their ancestors are a few scales dating to 450 million years ago. The end of the Permian period, 252 million years ago, saw yet another mass extinction event, wiping out around 96% of all marine life. But a handful of shark lineages persisted. 450 million years of survival and evolution, but the shark was about to meet its match, humans. From July 1st to 12th, 1916, dubbed the 12 Days of Terror. Four people died and another was wounded in five New Jersey shark attacks. The attacks garnered national media attention and sparked a newfound fear of sharks. These attacks inspired a book that led to a movie. There is a creature alive today who has survived millions of years of evolution without change, without passion, and without logic. Jaws. When Jaws was released in the 70s, there was a collective testosterone rush that went up and down the east coast of the United States. Fishermen wanted to prove how brave they were. Catching sharks as large as 500 pounds was possible with a reasonable size rod and reel. You're gonna need a bigger boat. But this was only the start. A lot of people blamed Jaws for the downfall of sharks, when actually, it started long before Jaws. It started with Flipper. <laughs> It's Flipper, the fabulous dolphin. The TV show Flipper was about to create huge problems for sharks. We just didn't know it yet. It was the tuna industry coming under increased scrutiny for dolphins accidentally caught during the process of tuna fishing. But then in the 1990s, dramatic films of slaughtered dolphins provided public exposure of the incredible waste and disregard for marine mammals coming from bycatch of tuna fisheries. The results of public opinion were dramatic. No one wanted to eat tuna, knowing it was hurting Flipper, and the tuna industry has collapsed. The United States consumed about 85% of the yellowfin tuna from the Eastern Pacific. By the end of 1992, this figure was less than 10%. So in order to stay afloat, tuna industries needed to change their methods to exclude the catch of dolphins, and they did. Incidental dolphin mortality had been reduced by 97%. The success is the result of a series of developments by the fishermen themselves. But these methods, although reducing the catch of dolphins, went from an average of only two sharks as bycatch to 2,950 sharks. We sacrifice sharks for dolphins, and it worked. And it only gets worse from there. In China, Shark fin soup has been a staple banquet dish since the Ming Dynasty, which began in 1368. It fell out of favour after the 1949 Communist Revolution, but surged back to popularity with wealthy elites in Hong Kong, Taiwan and Singapore. Then, the market for shark fin shifted back to mainland China, where a new middle class suddenly found itself able to afford a delicacy once enjoyed by only a privileged few. The number of threatened shark species had soared from 15 in 1996 to more than 180 in 2010. This was attributed to the growing Chinese demand for fins. Because of booming economies in Eastern Asia, people could now afford the delicacy of shark fin soup, so demand increased. The highest numbers of reported shark landings are from Indonesia, India, Taiwan, province of China, Spain, and Mexico. Until 2003, sharks averaged less than 2% of the catch produced by artisanal and industrial fisheries in Indonesia. Then at the beginning of the 21st century, Indonesia became the world's leading shark producer. With a dramatic increase of demand in shark fins, catch numbers peaked in the year 2000. But this did not last. Numbers decreased. Now boats travel further, 
into illegal waters, often catching protected species. Indonesia is only one of many countries targeting and dramatically impacting shark populations. There has been a 70% decline in shark populations globally over the past 50 years. Researchers were able to calculate that between 6.4% and 7.9% of sharks of all species are killed annually. To put that range into perspective, data from 62 shark species found that only 4.9% of sharks can be killed each year to maintain population stability. Anything more than that threatens long-term survival of species like the oceanic white tip, poor beagle, and several kinds of hammerheads. What's worse, sharks are considered uniquely vulnerable because they take long periods to mature and generally produce few young over their lifetimes. We are causing their extinction. If you swam in the ocean every day for 100 years, you are more likely to be struck by lightning than attacked by a shark. The BBC reported in 2021 that snakes killed 138,000 people per year. Dogs kill almost 60,000 of us. Crocodiles kill 1,000 humans a year. And around 500 people a year are killed by hippos. So how many people are killed by sharks per year? Five. Meanwhile, humans kill at least 100 million sharks a year.